you know. So, so you think that there is a place for constructive criticism? Oh, definitely. I mean, one of the things we talk about in, in the book or one of the um, reasons for the book is that everything in the art world is happening in a social setting. So if you only observed social rules, there wouldn't be any real authentic interchange. So you have to know when you're switching gears between politeness and actual cultural uh, conversation. Okay, we have a comment here. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable, actually, that I have to read in our in oh, our really? uh, chat room on our webpage. I, I was recently at a show of a friend who just graduated from art school. I'm not familiar with current practices because I'm an accountant, <laughs> But my friend did performance where he made excrement on a paper in front of everyone, and then they had an auction for it. I feel only revulsion and no understanding. And then he asked me later what my thoughts were. I could only say it was good to be polite. I am interested in what the proper response would have been. Yeah. <laughs> Are you speechless over right. there, Roger? I'm fairly <laughs> speechless. I, we knew that would come up. We, knew, we, we were expecting the uh, excrement on paper question to <laughs> Wait, let me, let me leaf through the book. <laughs> yeah. I think that's on page 25 or something. We deal with that. I, I think in a case like that, it's, it's uh, one of the things that Dushko and I talked about before was that in art, there's in addition to a very complicated etiquette, there's also a tradition of uh, avant-gardism and bohemianism and shocking and trying to be transgressive. So if someone is clearly trying to get you to react in a, in a certain way and be uncomfortable, maybe it is permissible to tell them, quite frankly, how you felt. That's probably what they want. It's probably very satisfying for that artist to know that they've made a viewer uh, uncomfortable or, 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 at, or nervous in that. I would be, uh, yeah, I would be likely to, engage, uh, to critique it as excrement, you know, and just talk, <laughs> talk about its qualities, you know, its color, smell or something like that be because that would, that's exactly what the person didn't want to hear. So. Well, and certainly if you just say, I like your art, they're going to know you're full of it. Right. Excrement. Yeah. Full of it, exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit more about the book. Uh, you've got a series of questions that you went and you asked artists and gallery owners, and, and a lot of it has to do with the shift in etiquette uh, given this new economy. And I actually was surprised to learn that there has been a shift in etiquette, uh, some of which is good, I guess. And then I guess there's also the shift in the economy itself, which may not be so good for artists. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what changes have occurred in the art world. I guess there's less wine at the openings. <laughs> yeah, and maybe the locations, wine. the venues might be different. Uh, tell us about some of what's changed out there for artists showing their work. Well, we were talking before the show that I think most people had a positive response, you know, that people become friendlier, people aren't as anxious about money, you're sure of who your friends are because nobody's going to be making a ton of money off of these interchanges. Um, but we were also thinking that people who were really sad about the money dropping weren't going to want to publish that in a in a journal, so we mm -hmm. probably missed a lot of people who were, who were thinking, gosh, I used to be making a lot of money off these openings, and and now I'm not. And, I mean, that's just not a very funny or interesting thing to put in a in a little uh, pamphlet. So our sample might be off in a way. But most people are saying people are more relaxed. You can talk to people more as friends rather than as business partners, which I think is what a lot of people were secretly longing for during the boom, even though now they have less money now. So it's more about the art exactly. and less about commerciality. Right. Yeah, sometimes walking into a gallery uh, in New York can be a very chilly experience, especially when, uh, you know, if you're not a collector, you're just a, a sort of a casual passerby, uh, people are less inclined to take you seriously. But now there's a lot, there's a lot less money in the art world. There's a lot uh, fewer collectors. People are buying less. And when you go into a gallery, uh, people are genuinely happy to see you, I think, now and want to engage you about the art. And uh, any sign of continuing to support contemporary art is, is looked on very favorably. But then there is the very real question of how you put food on the table. Right. That's uh, no amount of etiquette will, <laughs> yeah, will change well, that. Yeah, there, yeah. yeah, that might be slightly beyond our, uh, our, our uh, things that we could give advice about. Um, it just it's a hard time for everyone in the art world i mean i don't think there's yeah like roger said there's no manners that can get around that i think people are being more honest probably now about money and confessing that oh you know i'm not making so much or 
I'm really glad I got this job because I'm not selling as much, that kind of thing. Are, are there changes in the way art is presented, the venues perhaps? Or I, I, I've noticed that my acupuncturist, for example, is now displaying art mm -hmm. because some artists came to her and asked her to. And she said, okay, I have free wall space. And so this is now a new venue for art. And the presentation is different. There aren't any frames on anything. And so I wonder if this is, it's less about etiquette, but I wonder if you're seeing a shift in sort of the culture of the art world. I've, I've been to a lot of shows uh, recently that are happening in people's apartments or uh, spaces uh, out in Brooklyn that they just happen to have access to. And it's a very different feeling than going into a big gallery in Chelsea where you know that people are paying tens of thousands of dollars of rent. Uh, everyone that's there is uh, there because they want to see art and talk about it. And they usually have a great, uh, very generous feeling to them. But it does say something about sponsorship. It sure does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think art is less of a commodity now, which was what a lot of people were confused about in the last decade or so, was how to treat it as culture and as commodity. And now it's it's probably going to be just more culture. So, What, uh, Roger? I was going to say that created a lot of tension, I think, in terms of etiquette, the, uh, the fact that art was becoming this very, very uh, large, very lucrative business at the same time as uh, one had to uh, maintain a sort of uh, a feeling of, I don't know, intellectual engagement with it, rather. You didn't want to be obviously doing business, but at the same time, business was being conducted. And yeah, there's the, like, sort of bohemian entrepreneur split within the artistic personality especially, and a lot of mixed signals about what you should be doing at any given time. A lot of our artistic role models grew up in a world that was a lot cheaper and rent was less in New York, and they acted badly. You know, they got drunk a lot and they did all this stuff. Our generation luxury. all went to graduate school, has a lot of debt, has been completely trained in how to operate business cards and websites and all this kind of stuff. So when you put those two things together, you get a very mm -hmm. uh, cross-wired kind of personality where someone's trying to maintain their credibility but also p conduct business. Here's an unspoken rule of art etiquette from Dean <laughs> uh, on our website. Don't ever say, my three-year-old kid could paint that. Yeah, that's a conversation stopper there. <laughs> uh, here's another one. I sell art on the city streets, and while it's nice to hear I like it, it's not really a conversation. The more questions that are exchanged, the more rewarding the experience for both parties. That's pretty good advice. You know, if you make a real honest inquiry about the piece, that's better than just I love your work. Right. Absolutely. I think uh, artists love to talk about themselves. Uh, they're actually very, <laughs> Just like everyone else. Right, there are very few <laughs> situations where uh, uh, genuine, uh, genuine, sincere questions would be uh, uh, scorned. 